I don't really have an intro for this video because I cut the last video in half, so uh, here we go. Anyway, moving on to new libraries that I'm using. Let's start with the big ones. A theme here that you will be noticing is that I have not been looking a lot for your standard orchestral libraries because I'm honestly, I'm covered on that front. There are some libraries that I'm still curious about that I don't need, but I want to just try them out. But beyond that, I'm really, really covered on just plain orchestral sampling. I mean, how many string libraries do you need? But so I've started looking a lot more for textures and just creative libraries that just do other stuff <laughs> than just plain orchestral stuff. One thing that I specifically asked for, uh, I asked orchestral tools because, um, you know, we collaborate occasionally. It was like something I'm really interested in is time macro and time micro. It's basically orchestral textures, some with big orchestra and then some with small orchestra, but also reversed effects and you can blend the different sounds. It's really hard to describe. I will make a separate video on this just because I really want to showcase what this can do because I really love it. It comes with a ton of patches and it's textures, organic textures, but in a really creative way with some standard orchestrations, but then also with just really random instrument combinations. There's also choir and then there's also like harp and mandolin and stuff like that. And it's, I love it is what I'm saying. I've been extensively using it in almost everything. I loaded every single patch into my template. So yeah, um, highly recommend this one, but I'll make a separate video about it because I think those deserve their own video. Something I bought is their bass flute. I really love their solo woodwinds. I mean, I've been using Berlin woodwinds for a really long time. Uh, I needed a bass flute and I really love that you can just buy individual instruments. Um, so this one I bought, really love their bass flute. And then something I got for free from them because I made a video about it already is the whole Berlin string series. You can watch my video if you wanna, you know, know my individual thoughts about it. The one I'm, I've been using the most is the Sordino strings. I think that's the best out of the three or four. So that's been the one that I've found myself loading the most as I'm working on projects. I've been using it on almost everything, so. But watch my video if you if you really wanna if you want the long explanation. <laughs> then the next brand I want to recommend is Audio Ollie. I did not get anything for free from them. No, I bought everything. Um, I bought almost everything. Um, specifically though, LA Modern Percussion. If you want really beefy drums. I think Alan Meyerson made this one, recorded and mixed this one or something. Um, love it. You know, I have Cineperk for like the realistic sound and then I have the Zimmer percussion. But as with most Spitfire libraries, it's kind of lacking a lot of oomph. It has a lot of room on it and stuff. And LA Modern percussion, it's beefy. It's beefier than damage. Mixing damage and LA Modern Percussion actually gives you the most epic sound ever. So highly recommend, but everything Audio Ollie made is good. I mean, I haven't tried every product, but I got the scoring synths as well. I got some of their audio patches as well. And then um, their, some of their muted stuff as well. Muted piano, memoir piano, I think it's called. All great stuff, really creative. So highly recommend this entire brand. Didn't get anything for free from them. Why didn't I get anything for free from them?
Next one is Project Sam. I got, I think I got everything for free from, no, I bought some phobia. I think I bought some phobia. That was a long time ago. I don't, actually, I think that was also an NFR. I actually reached out to them because I needed Pandora for the video game I'm working on. I was like, hey, and I've always been interested in Lumina because I've been playing around with that. When I was an assistant, some of my bosses had that and I always liked it. So I reached out to them and I was like, hey, um, could you offer me like a bundle price for Lumina and Pandora and then I'll make a video about it? And they just sent it to me for free. So thank you for that. They also send me True Strike for free. <laughs> My point is all of their products are amazing. I love them. Um, I would have bought them if they hadn't given them for free. So, but yeah, I specifically needed Pandora. What an amazing library. It's basically horror textures, clusters, risers, and you know, really aggressive textures and also some sound designy patches with full orchestra, but also split out sections. but it's designed in a way that you can actually write pieces with it because it's tempo synced. So you can tell it exactly, if there's a swell, for example, you can tell it exactly how long you want the swell to be. And, you know, if you want it to react to, you know, tempo and meter and bars and beats and all that stuff. I always thought was kind of a shame with other libraries that do textures because they don't tempo sync, so all you can do is press a button and whatever comes out, comes out, you know? It's like, you kind of have to build your piece around the textures because they're just gonna do whatever they, they're just gonna unfold however they unfold. And I always thought that's kind of a shame because you can't really write with that, right? And everybody has the exact same sound and it's like, you press a button and that's it. And the same with crescendos, like they just land when they land. And then if you change the tempo, they no longer land. And it's, it's just, a, it was never great, which is why I never loved writing aleatoric stuff because there's not a lot of libraries that really have full orchestra aleatoric stuff that you can control. Pandora does that the way it's conceptualized, but also it has like reverse effects in it and just other effects you can put on it. And I'll make a separate video about it. Same with Lumina, especially because they also gave some phobia and all of these a huge overhaul as well with the interface and all that. I'll make a separate video specifically about Pandora as well, because I've used it extensively on the video game. I can't talk about it yet and I can't make the video yet because the game has not been announced and it's not been released, so I can't show it. Once the game is out, there will be a big Project Sam video about this because this library is amazing if you need horror textures or aleatoric stuff. Obviously, if you don't need that, then <laughs> you're not gonna have a lot of use for it. But other than that, fantastic. And Lumina is basically similar. It has all these ethereal fantasy textures in it and combo patches. And it's a, you can control it a little less than Pandora, but it's still so gorgeous. It's really inspiring to work with. I think all of Project Sam's products are really inspiring. Like you just play the patches and you're like, I want to write with that. So love them. Next big thing, Spectrasonics. I don't think I owned Omnisphere back in the day when I made the first videos, but I do have that now. 
Also very much want to recommend some expansions for Omnisphere, especially by the unfinished, the um, Colossus, is it Colossus? I think it is. Uh, those expansions, but basically anything by the unfinished, really great expansions if you need them. Um, and I also bought Keyscape. Honestly, anything by Spectrasonics is fantastic. It's pricey and they don't have a lot of sales, if ever but it's worth it because you get the complete collection, right? You don't really need anything else. Next up, I wanna talk about Heaviosity. I've been buying a bunch of their stuff, um, scoring guitars, but also Novo. I think I just got Novo Essentials. Eventually I need to get the upgrade because this is a super nice um, library, basically like string stuff, but processed, which is kind of cool. Similarly, Symphonic Destruction, I've been using that on a bunch of projects. Super creative, um, aggressive sounds and super fun to use. And also super fun to modify, like you don't have to use the presets. It comes with a ton of stuff that you can just modify and create your own sounds and your own presets. But I find Heaviosity is one of the companies that really over the past couple of years has created really creative stuff that is really fun to use and you can create unique sounds with it that nobody else has instead of just doing, you know, plain sampling of instruments. They do creative things with that. Then we got Strats off. They sent me almost everything for free uh, a while back. I already did the Aflatus uh, review, but they also, what I actually had reached out to them for was the Jade Orchestra and the Balkan Orchestra. And I was asking just for a discount, but then they sent it to me for free. Highly recommend Jade and Balkan, especially Balkan because I, I don't think a lot of that exists. Um, but Jade as well, I love the simplicity of it. Um, you know, I don't love complicated sample libraries that have a million variations and key switches and all the stuff in them. I want something that I can just write with and Jade does that and Balkan as well. Uh, I'll do a separate video on those. Something I did buy based on knowing Jade was Jade Evolutions. I actually pre-ordered that, already used it on a score. I started having um, a soft spot in general for these um, libraries that have textures and then these XY pads. And you can also select the textures and morph them into stuff because again, it's a very creative use of something that that's gonna sound really interesting, but nobody else is gonna do it exactly the same way. And you can do so many different things with it absolutely love Jade Evolutions. It's a really great expansion basically for uh, Jade Orchestra. I mean, it's not an expansion, it's its own product, but I think the two together actually make for a really great collection. They also sent me like all of their choirs. <laughs> I like the children's choirs the most, um, the boys and the girls and their ethnic choirs. I am struggling a little bit with the storm choir and generally with the adult choirs, uh, but maybe I haven't played around with them enough yet. But I'm, I've been using the children's choirs a lot and I've been using their ethnic choirs a lot. And they have a very unique phrase builder in them. If you, I can link to a video that where they explain their specific phrase builder. Big plus is all of their libraries have that phrase builder and they all have the same um, the same syllables, which as you may remember, I hate it with some other phrase builders where the different libraries just didn't have the same syllables so you couldn't mix them very well. Um, not a problem here, they really were very diligent about having the same syllables in all of their choirs. I don't know what these syllables are sometimes because th they seem very random, but I don't know. 
But you can also morph the syllables and kind of decide where the legato happens and all this stuff. I, I'll link to the video where they explain it. They have a very particular phrase build engine and a very particular script in there that works in a way that I'm not sure other libraries have, to be honest. Something else I have finally found a purpose for, I've just used it also on the video game, the Amazonian. Nope. Editor Anne here to tell on camera Anne that it's called the Amazonic, not the Amazonian. Anyway, carry on which they sent to me a really long time ago and it's been on my list to make a video about forever um, because, again, I'm not sure anybody has ever sampled these instruments. They really traveled to the Amazon <laughs> and recorded natives there playing those ancient instruments. It's really hard to find a use for it, I think, or at least for me it was because it's such a specific sound, you know, similar with all the other like world music libraries, you know, a lot of those instruments just have such a specific sound that you'd really need a specific project for it to use them. But so I finally have that and love playing around with it and having these really unique sounds. Something I really appreciate about that library is that a portion of the profits also goes back into those communities where they recorded those instruments you know, money is donated to them. So I think that's a really nice sustainable way as well to, you know, make these products, but then reinvest into the communities that made that possible in the first place. So very good. We approve of good business ethics. So um, it's a very modern way to run a sampling business. And I, I like it. I like it. I think more companies need to do that. Especially if we're going out and we're sampling instruments from other cultures and then sell them, you know, reinvest into those communities. That's, that's a really good idea and a really sustainable way of doing anything. Something else that I bought is Native Instruments Thrill. It's similar to Jade Evolutions in that it has the XY pad and different textures that are recorded and you can select those textures and then morph them with the XY pad. Also super helpful to have the monogram CC that I talked about in the last video for this kind of stuff because it's kind of difficult to do with the mouse. It's nicer to do it with actual faders and knobs. Anyway. Really love this one because I needed horror textures. That's essentially what this is. Um, clusters, but also just aleatoric stuff that you can morph into, you know, whatever you select. And again, what I love about this is even though different people can have this library, nobody is exactly going to create with it what you're going to create with it. And that's where my head is at at the moment. That's also where my projects are at at the moment. So. Those are the kinds of products that I'm seeking out currently. I also got Superior Drummer 3. Is it 3? I think so. Um, it comes with a bunch of expansions as well for different genres. I just really needed a good drum kit. I only had the drum kit from Cinepark, which I don't find super useful. So I need a, needed a good drum kit. And this, I think, is the one, especially with the expansions, to work on songs that I've been doing for the past couple of years, but also there are a bunch of scores. You know, some of the Hallmark scores kind of needed a more pop music-like underscore, so I really was in need of a drum kit, and so highly recommend this one. Super easy to use, already comes with a whole variety of stuff. It's tempo synced if you want it to be. You can also put grooves in already, um, or it can also actually analyze pre-existing grooves if you're looking for something specific and then make a groove pattern out of that. So it has a little assistant in it as well, similar to like the isotope products where you can drop in a reference and it'll analyze it for you. Really love it, highly recommend if you need a drum kit. And I bought this one, I did not get this for free. I also ended up buying the best service accordions too, because I worked on a German movie, which is gonna come out later this year. Um, I mean, it's an American movie, but it takes place in Germany. And so I figured accordions <laughs> were the way to go. 
so that's why I got that library. It's really great. It has different kinds of accordions from all over Europe in it and um, worked really well. Another library I bought was Sunset Strings from Realitone. Re Realitone? How do you say that? I don't know. They make pretty creative libraries. Um, I'm interested in some more of their stuff, but for now I just got Sunset Strings a, a while ago, actually. But yeah, it's really hard to get me excited about, you know, orchestral libraries, as you can see. But Sunset Strings is really, um, it's textures but you can shape the textures so you have an attack that you can select a release and then you have two layers of sustains and you can morph between those layers or layer them on top of each other and there's all kinds of different um, textures and aleatoric stuff and also extended uh, techniques and all this kind of stuff in there so you can kind of create your own preset and then have aleatoric stuff going on that is actually interesting to listen to and that is easy to use. Again, it's kind of unique in a way and not everybody's gonna do the same thing with this tool, which I always appreciate these days. Like, you cannot get me to buy another string library. It's not happening. <laughs> but this one I saw and I was like, that's actually kind of cool. That's a cool concept and it's not just an average cookie cutter string library. So that's why I got it. And I recommend it if you're looking for, you know, again, aleatoric stuff, textures, extended techniques and all that stuff. And you want to get creative with that sort of thing. Something I forgot to record apparently is Ilya Efimov's nylon guitar. I hope I said his name right. Uh, I first encountered this library about 10 years ago um, because it was part of Chris Leonard's template when I worked from his studio. I also got the Balalaika library as well um, and we'll probably get more later. I think he has some of the best plucked string instruments on the market. They sound great out of the box and are super easy to use so I highly recommend getting those if you're in the market for nylon guitar or any other plucked string instrument. Then I also got sent uh, a bunch of stuff by Audio Artemis, which is a small company in the UK, I believe run by ladies. They make some really cool, very small, um, you know, like little $5 products that are really creative. And yeah, I would say, you know, support that business so they can make more stuff. Another one I've been supporting is called Folklorica Sounds. I think it's owned and run by um, a Scottish woman called Lucy Treacher. Treacher? Treacher? Treacher. Anyway, go to her website. It's First of all, she clearly has a very fun sense of humor and is clearly a very quirky person. Um, and listen to her speak, and I want to know if you feel the same way, but um, when she speaks, it feels like she's the Luna Lovegood of sampling. And then finally we have Whisper, which are eerie harmonic slides. And actually they sound really cool as chords, I think. And you can further manipulate your sounds by using these little parameters that I've made. So we've got stagger here, which adds a ping pong delay to your sound. Thank you. 
And then we've got Shimmer, which adds this really nice Sultasto tremolo, quite a, a scratchy, uh, haunting sound. Tell me if you feel the same way. I could listen to her all day. But anyway, I bought all of her stuff because she does these really quirky, fun little things. Um, and I've been using them all over the place. And I highly recommend, like, it, it's not expensive. It's just really small little, fun little things to use, like little, almost like toy things. Um, but yeah, again, support small business, especially the ones owned by the ladies because we don't really have enough ladies in sampling in general. We're, we're getting there, but you know, highly recommend. Um, for, for her personality alone, highly recommend. Another company to keep an eye on is Slate and Ash. If you're interested in natural textures and innovative sounds, they should definitely be on your list. I just bought Landform's Elements, so I didn't have this part pre-recorded, but I wanted to mention them just because I absolutely love this product and I highly recommend. Now the last two companies, I was debating whether I wanted to mention them or not because they've been... Uh, <laughs> entrenched in controversy. But I figure for completion's sake, I should probably mention them, or at least the products that I bought. I didn't get anything for free from them, which is uh, I got Polaris by Spitfire. Spitfire actually reached out a bunch of times wanting me to do reviews of their new Abbey Road stuff and whatever, um, which I'm not interested in at all. Um, they did offer to give me other stuff that I'm interested in, but I'm not, I mean, if you've watched my other videos, you know I'm very selective about what I like from Spitfire to begin with. Um, like Tundra and that sort of stuff, or the Olaf for Arnold stuff. But yeah, there's not a ton of stuff that I even want from them to begin with. Polaris was something that I wanted for the game that I'm working on. And the sounds are really cool, I will say that. This is one of the most creative things, I think, that they've made. The problem I have with that library is that it is, the, the player is so unwieldy. What's up with that? Is the Spitfire player always like that? Because I think I only use their stuff inside the contact player. So I have not had to use the Spitfire player as much, but from what I'm experiencing, it's not great. It's, it's a resource hog. Um, I have to freeze tracks all the time, even when I just load like two or three instances of Polaris, I get dropouts and stuff, and um, this doesn't happen. I have a really powerful computer. I can load several instances of Omnisphere and fill them up entirely, and several instances of Zebra going on and all this other stuff. Um, you know, I have like a thousand tracks in my template, so I can load a lot of stuff, and then when I use Polaris, unfortunately, like, the CPU just spikes up by like 20% and I'm like, what is going, is it the player or is it the effects that are inside of Polaris? Either way, if you have a weak computer, you're not gonna have fun with this one. I barely have fun with this one. And it's really a shame because the sounds are so good. They're so creative and so, you know, unique. And, and so it's so fun to listen to. But then, yeah, it's so hard to use just because of how bloated it is and how much it stresses out my computer and then, you know, freezing tracks and that or like bouncing into audio. And I'm just like, I haven't had to do that in like 10 years, okay? Like, this is where we're at. So yeah, don't love the functionality of it. Love the sound, don't love how it works or rather doesn't work. And... That's kind of the thing for me with instruments as well as software. If it doesn't, if it's not a joy to use, it doesn't matter how good it sounds. I'm just less inclined to use it. And it's kind of a shame because I want to use it more 
but it's just too much of a pain to use at times. So I, I just don't have the time and the patience. <laughs> But let me know if you're using other libraries that are using the Spitfire player, if it's if that's a general problem with the player or if it's just this library that is just very heavy. And then the other company, they also reached out to me, um, but I don't want to review their stuff um, for a variety of reasons. You can find the reasons online. It's everywhere. 8DO. I have been using the Misfit Fiddle a lot everywhere. It's just a really cool creative little thing. Um, and I've been using their steel uh, guitar bundle a lot, especially the strummer. Like they have this really cool strummer pattern interface where you can uh, have different strum patterns and all kinds of chords that you don't usually get in other libraries. Like their guitars in general are really good, I think. So I've been using that a lot. Anyway, that's all that's new sampling wise. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions about any of these products and I'll try to answer them in the comments if I have the answers. I'll also link to all the products so you can check them out and check out the product demos and stuff. Some of these I will do dedicated videos about, like I said, once the projects are out where I use those things. But yeah, for now, that's all that I have to say about this and I'll see you guys in the next video.